Welcome, welcome one and all. Winter Wizard here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I like to paint power armor for my Space Wolves army, the great company of Frostpaws. today whoever you are and welcome to this little video of mine where I'm going to be showing you how I like to paint power armor for my for my Space Wolves army the great company of Frostpaws. Well it's cold and lonely here in Winter Wizards Frozen Fortress uh, but we just had it's morning here actually we just had a nice cup of coffee kept you roast I'm joined as always by my friend and co-host Norwegian Troll Dimu and this is the day we are we've been putting this We've been putting the series off for quite some time now, but now is the day that we are going to tackle painting the frost paws. So I, I'm not going to beat about the bush too much. I'm going to dive straight into the tutorial, but I just very quickly want to explain what's going on here. So this is episode one in a painting series I'm doing called Painting the Frost Paws. If you weren't already aware, uh, I have a Space Wolves army called the Great Company of Frost Paws. And, um, and so for each of the armies that I collect, I like to do a, a long, in-depth painting tutorial series broken up into different episodes where I break down all the different aspects and I reveal, uh, I unveil all the secrets, all the tips and tricks for painting, for painting the colour scheme for my for, for my army. And not only that, I, I apply all of those tricks, all of those, um, well, all, all of those um, aspects of the color scheme to a single model so if you watch the series from start to finish you'll get to see a really cool model painted from start to finish as well in the color scheme of my army so uh, I like to pick a nice character model so today uh, well for for this series painting the frost pools we've gone for Mr. Ragnar Blackmane, the young king, there he is. So I'm going to be painting Ragnar Blackmane in this series, starting from today, going from the power armor to all the different aspects of him, from the weapons to the to the furs, the bones, the runes, the skin, his face, uh, all the way down to the base. So I'm going to be doing everything in this series on Ragnar. So as I said, if you watch from start to finish, you'll get to see Ragnar here painted from start to finish. So all that being said, we're going to dive straight into this today. So today I'm going to be painting the uh, the power armor. So for my Space Wolves army, I do go for the very traditional blue-gray uh, of, of Fenris, the Space Wolves power armor. It didn't really feel... Uh, I was thinking of other color schemes that I could have gone for, but it, it just felt it felt right to, to do the... To do the legit... to do the traditional Space Wolves color. But I do have my own spin on it as well. Uh, something that's unique to the frost paws is they paint their fingers uh, and their knee, pa knee pads black uh, to symbolize the day they knelt upon the ice and earned their fingers. But uh, anyway, I digress. So I'm going to be painting that today as well. But that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be painting the nice blue gray Space Wolves armor here, all the sort of bronzy, goldy colored trim. Uh, the black fingers, black knee plates, and all that good stuff there. So that's what we're doing today. Power armor. So we've got Ragnar here built and painted and we've primed him already and the, the spray that I that I use for all my Space Force models is uh, Army Painter Spray and it's the colour Uniform Grey. I think grey is just a really nice colour to start with and it's going to help create that sort of bluish grey feel of the, of the armour. Um, it took me a while to work out exactly how I wanted that armour to look. There's various different methods. Um, they are quite subtle in difference. Um, but I, I, I'm quite happy with the way that it's come out for my particular models. Um, still got a nice sort of slightly more grim dark kind of feel to it. Um, but so, but the way we start that is uniform grey. Uh, I've got a selection of paints up here, loads of them in fact, and we are going to be using all of these today. So let me show you what we've got here. Uh, we've got lead belcher, some silver. This is going to be for all the sort of joins between the power armour uh, that you can see in there that Space Marines often have. Uh, so it's Lead Belcher base from Citadel. We've got Brune Fang Steel from Citadel as well. Just going to be using this for some highlights and some chipping effects. Uh, for the trim, we're going to start with a Balthazar Gold uh, base paint there. And for the blue-gray color, we've got Rust Gray, uh, the layer paint, layer paint there, and Fenrisian Gray as well. So perfect colors there. Uh, we've got some Abaddon Black here. This is going to be for the fingers and the knee plates and stuff like that uh, as well as some Eschen grey to highlight that with and then going back to the gold trim we're going to be using a contrast paint for that uh, Gullum and Flesh or Gillum and Flesh uh, contrast paint from Citadel so really nice there and then a couple of washes got Nolan Oil here 
and we've got our Grax Earth shade there. Uh, and that is all the paints that we're going to need today. So, uh, so we're going to zoom in. We're going to get started here. Okay, here we are then. So we've zoomed in and we're ready, ready to go. Thank you for, thank you for listening. I'd just like to explain what's going on before we dive into anything like this. Uh, and again, this is a, this is a full in-depth painting series. So I'm going to be sharing all my tips, all my tricks, um, unveiling all the secrets of painting the color scheme, basically. So I'm going to be giving you as much information as I possibly can. So. We're going to start here with, well, I've got a wet palette over here, I'll be painting a wet palette, uh, I've got a Citadel brush here, base, base brush, and we're going to start with the, we're going to start with the lead voucher here, so, I'm going to crack this open, you might be able to hear a little clicking noise there, uh, what I like to do is you can get some ball bearings like this, uh, stainless steel ones so they don't rust, and stick those in your paint pots, uh, they'll just help with the mixing, a couple of those in a pot acts like a mixing ball. You can buy those from the Army Painter or you can get them on something like eBay. And I've got a little paint, paint cap here just to hold the pot open. And so, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to start by filling in all those little bits of gap between the Army. You see the one like on the back of his leg there, just in there. All those little uh, under there. Uh, sort of under his armpits and things like that. All the sort of gaps between the armor plates. We're going to fill those in with some lead voucher to start with. So I'm going to get a little bit of that on the palette. Make sure it's a nice thin consistency. I'll say thin, you know, nice and smooth. The wet palette does tend to help with that if it's nice and fresh. There we go. So I'm going to blot some of this in. And You do a couple of couple of smooth coats, but you know I tend to find that with the silver, one 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 good coat seems to work nicely. We're gonna blot these in. You don't worry about being too too rough or neat at the moment. Just get the colour in. It helps if you're neat because what we are gonna do is we are actually gonna use this the primer grey that we've already got on here. As a as a base color, and apply the blue straight on top of it. So if you can be neat, that's great. But it's not the end of the world if you're not. I'm not sure if there's any in there. But let's have a look. Be under here. Uh, a little bit in his knee. In there. There we go. So I'm going to pick out all of these little bits, fill all those in, and then we'll move on. Okay, so that's the silver now nice and dry. Blotted in all those bits there. I've even done these little, um, these kind of like grappling, grappling spikes on his on his toes there, which is quite cool. Uh, well, there we go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give this a wash with the uh, with the null oil here. It's a nice little trick I like to use with the wash pots. I always like to stick a little little knob of blue tack down there, and that just keeps the pot a little bit still when I'm trying to. Trying to use it. I've sworn Russ's teeth at a few, a few spilt pots of wash. Anyway, here we go. So we're gonna just take this straight from the pot. I've got a wash brush here. Br brush here. This is a uh, pure red sable. Um, and take a nice blob of that and flood that into these, into these, um, to these silvers, silver areas. Really flood it in and let it all sit in the sit in the gaps and the details. Like so. And there's a bit on his hand there. Like that. And his gut down here. And top of his knee. In there, a bit down in his neck area. So I'm just flooding this wash in, getting a nice, nice amount of it on these detail on these areas. And then what I'm going to do is, while it's drying, just keep an eye on it and work it around if it's blotting or pooling a bit too much. Gonna darken down these nice silver areas. 
So there we go. Oh, there's a couple of little, um, like little pipes or something on the back of his power pack or something there. So we're gonna fill those in as well. Like so. More of that. Just being careful not to, not overload in the wash, but you do need a relative amount to get a nice effect on it. It's a bit of a balance because uh, sometimes you feel like you don't need as much. Sometimes you feel like you don't want to put too much on. But really, it's better to have a little bit more than, you know, how you put a nice dollop on and then you sort of manipulate it around and move it around and get it get it looking good. It gives it a nice strong, strong shaded tone. You know, you can always take a little bit off. You know, if you if you need to, wash your brush out, dry it off on the kitchen towel and then um, soak it up with the brush like so, but uh, we're all right here at the moment. But yeah, so I'm gonna keep an eye on this, keep playing with that, and then uh, we'll come back once the, once the washes are all nice and dry. So while the wash is drying, I thought we'd move on and do a different section. Uh, we can just let that let that do its work whilst we're move, whilst we're doing something else. So we're gonna start on the sort of bronzy gold trim. So we're gonna use Balthazar Gold here. I'm going to use a slightly more finer brush here. I've got a, uh, I've got an army painter. Uh, I'm not sure what size it is really. It's just a nice little, just a nice little little, little layer brush here. I'm going to be taking some of this out, and this is going to be for all the all the decorative, all the decorative trim. So, whatever you want that to be, I'm going to use it on things like. He's got kind of like these these wolves here on his on his belt area. All these gems that he's got here, they they have kind of like a sort of an outer casing uh, that's framing the gem. So we're going to just paint the whole thing and come back to that. I'm going to need a couple of coats of these. Uh, these these I'm debating whether to do these. He's got kind of like these etched decorative etch section on the bottom of his legs there I may do those uh, but anything things like these what do you call them uh, pins braces badges something like that uh, brooch that's the word things like those paint them in these color in this color uh, if you want to do some decorative trim, you can do that. Uh, I might actually paint these these wolves on the top of his power pack here. These like wolf heads. Uh, that's going to give. It's also going to give you a nice nice look at what goes what's going on here as well. So we'll paint those, I think. And yeah, and I might do those. Uh, so I'm going to fill these in with the Balthazar gold. Um, to a couple of nice smooth coats. They can be quite tricky, these metallic paint, paints by Citadel, but just take your time, get it nice and watered down. Uh, obviously not too watery, but a nice nice flow on it, a nice consistency, and give a couple of smooth coats, be patient with it, but yeah, so I'm gonna fill these in, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we've picked out the decorative bronzy gold bits. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we're going to give these uh, a nice coat of the, of the Gilliman Flesh, the contrast paint. And they work really nicely, these contrast paints, I think. Uh, I don't know if they're all... I don't know if they're amazing for what uh, GW really, uh, you know, marketed them as, but I think that some of them are definitely, definitely really great. Definitely have got lovely uses. You can use them like washes, you see, like a nice thick wash. Uh, they'll give some really great texture, really great colours to things. So we're going to apply this all over these, all over these bronze bits, and just blot it on. Let it sit, let it soak into all those bits. Oh, I should have mentioned that I did do, I did do a couple of coats of the bronze of the Balthazar gold. Gives a nice strong, strong colour to that. But yeah, just do a nice sort of smooth layer of this contrast all over those bits. And I really like this effect. It's going to give it a really nice sort of, um, it's going to give it a real sort of nice, almost a reddish sort of tone. 
almost a reddish kind of tone to this goldy colour. It's really nice, I think. But yeah, so we're going to apply that all over. And work that into all those. See, look how, look how suddenly that bit just really comes to life right there. All the runes pop out. Really nice. And you can find that these contrast paints, they often do actually, they're more easier to... You can find that they're easier to work with than a wash. Uh, they tend to sit on things better, I think. So, they work really nicely. So I'm going to cover all these areas. And up here as well. In this nice contrast colour. And going to let that dry nice and fully. It will take a while. And then we'll come back. So that's the Gulliman Flesh contrast, nice and dry now, and uh, as you can see, it gives it a really lovely sort of dark and tarnished sort of, a real sort of reddish, a nice reddish tone to it. I, I really like the effect. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the uh, the silver bits that we've done before, those uh, all the all the armor joins and things like that, and we're going to do those with a little bit of a highlight. Uh, we're just going to use the the lead belcher again, and I'm just going to pick out some of the some of the details of those of those joints again so they have a sort of nice ribbed effect to them anyway so I'm gonna sort of just put a little bit on the top bits on the top ridges of those not running it into the gaps it's just more of a subtle thing it's just gonna give them a little bit of dimension so I'm gonna put a bit of that on these prongs or spikes on his on his feet down there down there and so find a good bit so at the back under here just along the shape of the that curves the ribbed effect just a little bit on those Like so. And build the back of his leg in there. But just do a little bit where you where you think they need it. And if you want to take that ev even further, then we can do that as well. Uh, I'll show you with the um, we can do that as well with the rune fang steel. I might bring some of that out in a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit more on this ribbing, and then we're going to and then we're going to highlight some of the bronze or some of the goldy bronzy color that we've done. So I've done a little bit of highlighting on those silver bits, just to bring them out a little bit more, make them pop, a bit of dimension, and we're going to do the same with the with the Balthazar gold here. On the goldy brassy bits, so I don't want to go too heavy with this, but I'm more just picking out the sharpest details, uh, just to help sort of bring out the features of these bits. Just gonna give bring a bit of shine back because we did dull down a lot of the shine with the with the contrast paint. Like for example on this bit down here. Just picking out a little bit on the sharpest raised areas, a bit down the center of that thing there. So for example, like on the wolf up here, we're gonna a bit on his nose. I'm not overloading the brush, I've just, just got enough on there and it's got a nice flow to it so it's going to just really slide off the brush nicely. I'm using the sort of edge of the, the sort of long edge of the brush here, kind of like, like that rather than, rather than the tip on those sharper bits. So if you can do that, it's quite a nice way to be able to get a, a nice neat sort of highlight on, on a sharp edge without risk of Messing it up. I'll put a little bit of that on his on his teeth, bottom of his jaw there, front of his nose, like so. Like I said, not going mad. Just a bit. If we look on top here, we could do a bit on there. Keep 
again, maybe a bit around here. Bit of a shine on top there, like so. Just giving that a bit of a highlight. You see the sort of nice bit of a shine on it now. Brings a bit of that metallic feel back to it. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to run around this and uh, pick out a little bit of highlight on all those bits, and then we'll I'm going to highlight them that and the silver once more, and then uh, that'll be all the metallics done. Okay, there we are. So we've done the highlights with the Balthazar gold again, and the next thing we're going to bring out is the is the rune fang steel. So just for another additional little highlight here. And this is going to be, again, quite subtle, but this is just going to be on the very, very sharpest, sharpest of details, on the very sharpest of corners. But this is going to add, take a little bit of that goldish, sort of, the strongness of the Balthazar gold away from it as well. It's going to add a little bit of a, a little bit of a nicer, more subtler look. So, try not to overload the brush here. A little bit maybe on the top of the ear there, top of the nose. A bit on the teeth and along the jawline just on the sharpest bits it's a subtle thing this there we go like so and we'll do the same on this side Maybe on the nose top of the eyebrow down the snout top of the ear there Around here, a bit of the jaw, like so. And then when that dries, it's going to give him a slightly more natural look, I think. Uh, natural shine. So I'm going to put a little bit of this around the top. Just a little bit on the top there. There we go. So that's the idea with that and not forgetting all the bits of silver that we've done as well if we feel like we want to if we feel like there's a bit in there that you want to brighten up even more just a smidge you can add a little bit of this a little bit of this rune fang steel to that again so i'm thinking like the his uh his grappling toes like there Get that on there. Get under his hand that's sticking out there. A little bit in the hair. A little bit in there. Again, just a, just a little bit of this here and there. Like so. So I'm going to continue this. Going to go around and do the rest of the rest of the bronze, and then we'll move on. We'll start looking at doing some um, some actual Space Wolves blue grey power armor. There we are. Then to the Rune Fang steel highlights are all nice and done now. Just giving those little bits just a nice little bit of a glisten, a little bit of a shine. I think it looks nice. They're going to look really cool as well once everything else is done. Yeah, there we go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on actually getting that nice blue-grey Space Wolves power armor on the go. And the very first thing that we do is, uh, now that the model is, is primed grey, what I actually do is, immediately, is give it a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Uh, so I try and generally be as neat as possible with the with the bits of armor and try and get as little paint as I can on the grey bits. It doesn't matter if we do though. But what we're going to do next is Every all the grey armour, everything that we we're, we are going to be painting blue, I actually leave it grey and then give it a wash of Agrax Earthshade first. So we're going to do that now. There we are then. So I'm going to load up a wash brush with some of the Agrax. And the reason why I do this is uh, it's going to give it a nice sort of grey grey undertones to the blue when we start layering the layering the blue on top of it. And also if we highlight if we shade it in now. We can be a bit quicker, a bit rougher, and get it in all the cracks and the details and stuff. And when we put the blue on, it's going to look nice. Trust me. <laughs> okay. uh, and you can, if you want, get just a little bit of this Agrax on any of the armor that we've, on any of the uh, metallics that we've done. You can avoid it if you want to, but it's not the end of the world if we get it on it. You know, they are supposed to look worn and 
dirty, battle damaged, battle hardened. So there we go. I'm going to do a nice smooth coat, the Agrax Earthshade, all over the grey, all over the grey where, where we're going to be doing the Space Wolves armor. So that's what we're going to do now. Slapping it all over, working it around. And all the cracks and the details. Don't know if you can hear right now, but there's actually a, there's a storm raging outside. It's raining pretty hard out there. Nice and fitting for, for the sons of Venris. There we go. So I'm going to cover all of this in Agrax Earthshade and then uh, wait for that to dry nice and fully. And then we're going to start bringing in, introducing some blue. Okay, there we go. That's, that's the Agrax Earthshade, nice and dry, and that's the that's the armor all shaded in. Appreciate it. this might seem like a maybe a bit of a strange strange approach to it, painting the uh, washing the whole thing straight over the primer and then painting on, and then layering on top of that. But it seems to work for me, and uh, we've got a nice sort of dark dark grayish kind of kind of appeal here that we're going to build on the blue. So and the blue paints they are they are layers. So you're going to get some of the undercoat sort of sort of singing through very subtly, and it's going to give that nice bluish grey feel. Um, this is just my method anyway, and, uh, and I think it's nice. So um, anyway, so now we're going to build up the colour of the blue. We've got the rust grey here, and I've just got a layer brush, a layer brush on the go. You can use any sort of brush; it doesn't have to be a th doesn't have to be too small or too thick. Whatever's comfortable, but something. Along the lines of a layer or a brace brush will be quite nice. So I'm going to start with this and see how we get on. So the paint's going to be nice and smooth, and it is going to take a couple of a couple of good thin coats of this. Two, maybe three, but two should probably be two should probably be fine if they're nice and smooth. So, and we're just going to apply this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be avoiding the recesses, the bits where we've already shaded, and they're going to stay that nice sort of shaded dark grayish kind of colours. There we go. Just creating a nice smooth coat of this over the top. Make sure the paint is it's got a nice flow to it. So very pleased to finally be getting on with painting the frost paws. It has taken us quite a while to get around to getting on with this series. We've had Ragnar here built and built and pro ready to go for quite some time. And, uh, Slightly going to be a long series this one. Eight episodes we're planning for it, so I think there was a little bit of a mental hurdle uh, stopping us from getting on with it, but we're here now, so thank you for your patience if you've been waiting for it. If you are familiar with the uh, great company of Frostpaws, my Space Wolves Army, if you've seen them on the channel, if you've seen the showcase videos maybe for them, then you'll know that you you may have noticed that the the armor has a very overall, very frosty appeal to it. And that's not something I'm going to be covering today, but I will tell you how that's achieved. So if you do see the the main armor uh, on the space walls, you'll see the frosty effect, and that is achieved by literally just just a dry brush of of Corax white and. The, but that is the very last thing that I do when I'm painting my space falls, and that goes over absolutely everything on the model. Absolutely everything. So I shan't be doing that today because, I'm, like I said, that will be the very last thing that we do. But I just wanted to let you know that in case you're wondering why, perhaps if you're following along or why you're looking at if you're looking at this result and it doesn't quite look like the frost paws that you've seen. Well, that's because of that, the very final stage that we do. Anyway, so I'm working around, giving it a nice smooth, nice smooth consistency coat. Just use my finger to rub away a little bit of a smudge there. And what I find is, if you do use a slightly thicker brush, this one is very, is quite narrow actually, quite thin. If you use quite a if you do use a if you use a really thin brush like this, you can find it is quite easy to get lots of streaks and streaks and little lines and stuff. So find a brush that's maybe got a little bit a little bit thicker. 
maybe one and you can still you still this is a much thicker brush where you can see it's still got a very good tip and it's really the tip where the paint is the paint is going off anyway so but whatever works for you whatever you're comfortable with but those are just some just some ideas for you but there we go so I'm gonna walk work around and fill in all of this armor in this nice rust gray and then and I'll most well I'll definitely be doing a second coat but uh, I'll show you what the first coat looks like first once we've done that so I'm gonna carry on with this here we are so we've done a first coat of rust gray and it's coming on nicely and we can see here what I've been doing I've been just painting in the areas and avoiding the recessed details uh, avoiding avoiding the shading areas so you could you could start with a, a full complete coat of of the gray and then apply the shade you know sparingly just to the bits that you want it on um, but I seem to find that this 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 kind of speeds up the process for me spraying it gray shading the whole thing and then applying the blue nice and neatly afterwards um, and that's just the way I like to do it anyway um, but as you can see uh, there's only one coat of blue on here but it's got a quite a nice sort of there's a darkness in the recesses there's a nice sort of gray tone coming through underneath it so I'm gonna do another layer of the rust gray here and again I'm gonna be avoiding the recesses as much as possible and just sort of building up a nice smooth coat on the main panels and it's gonna give a, a nice three-dimensional dynamic feel to it so so I'm gonna be doing that now uh, well I just wanted to share a little little tip with you here when I am doing this uh, what I do tend to do is have one brush on the go and then and then if I say I make a mistake like so like getting that in the recess here I have another brush on hand um, just to relatively dry just to wipe that away bit of tissue bit of a rinse and pick that out again there we go crisis diverted and then I can carry on so I kind of seem to have two brushes on the go. Just a little trick there, but there we go. For any mistakes or spillages that you make. And but like I said, another smooth thin coat just to build up that solid layer of color on here. I'm gonna do that. And then we'll move on from there. Here we are then, so the rust gray is now nice and dry. A couple of thin coats there. A nice smooth finish. Uh, looking good, I think. I hope you can see the, the nice sort of bluish greyish tone to it now. Uh, so, we're going to highlight the armor a little bit with uh, Fenrisian grey. So, we're going to crack this open. And we're just going to apply a little bit of this onto, onto any of the sharpest details of the armor. Just to give it a bit more dimension, make it, make it sing. So, over there on the palette and. Take a little bit of this, and like I said, just the sharpest sort of details and edges, and bits where you think like the the light might hit. So I might do a little bit across the top of the knee just there, like so, a little bit like that uh, on the edge. It's going to be mostly on the sort of nice sharp edges of the of the armor plating. Uh, make sure that the paint's nice and nice and thin, not watery, just thin and smooth. So it's got a real nice flow to it. Kind of get a little bit on the palette, and don't need to overload the brush, but just have enough on the bristles. I'm kind of dragging the brush and twisting it to get the nice sharp point here, but also you know not trying to making sure that I haven't got too much on there. So that's kind of the way to just to load off a little bit of it there but then you drew some like do some little lines looks like it's going pretty nicely should have a good flow good consistency there we go so we take a little bit on there a little bit in there just on there a little bit around this on the curve of his toes there a little bit like that and And this shape there, a bit on the edge here. So you don't have to do absolutely every little bit. And, um, it's nice to make a bit of effort, especially on character models with 
a little bit of this highlighted effect. A little bit too much there, so I'm going to scrub a little bit of that out with my my other brush. There we go. This bit on the top here, this like little, little bit sticking on top of his knee. I'm actually going to paint that black and after we've done the rest of this, but I'm going to walk around, move around rather, and uh, paint the rest of the bits. So on the top of that one there, got a little bit of blue on there. Again, the sharper edges, just the sort of outline of the different plates, a little bit of the curve on here, perhaps. Round the uh, side of his leg there. Following that shape around. Like so. Just going to give it a little bit more of a 3D look. A bit more. So the main colour, the main body of the colour, working with the shading, working with the highlights, it's going to create a real nice real nice finish, real nice effect, so there we go. So you get the idea, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around and do these little highlights with the with the Venrisian grey and then we're going to think about paint, adding some black on here, paint the fingers and the, and the knee plate, and that signature great company of Frost Paul's look and after that we're going to do a little bit of chipping Chipping effect, a bit of a weathered, war-torn, beaten up effect, just a, just a little bit on the armour with some silver, and then we'll be done. So, so I'm going to carry on with this for a minute. Okay, there we are, so I've done some highlights with the Fenrisian Grey. Hope you can see a little bit of extra, it is subtle, but um, just gives a nice little extra, extra bit of definition and a little bit of detail. And... Like I said, subtle, but you, your eyes do tend to get drawn to that sort of thing, and they do notice it. So, I think it's nicer. It just adds a little bit of extra brightness to the armor. I didn't want it to be too bright. I wanted a sort of grim, dark, sort of bluey, grey kind of feel, but a little bit of a little bit of bright highlight is quite nice as well. So, uh, next thing we're going to do, this is the the great company of frost paws that we're painting here. So we need to they the great company of frost paws. They paint their fingers and typically a knee plate of their power armor in black um, so we're going to be using some abaddon black and uh, very simply so we're going to be painting ragnar's fingers here on his hand there so you can see this if you look at if you look at an actual hand we've got the fingers like so and then the bit of the thumb here uh that comes to there i still paint that in blue so you'll get sort of this all the fisty area in blue and then from that join to that join will be in black and then of course all the fingers as well so when you look at the model so you can see that he's got kind of the knuckle here and then if you look really closely on the model itself you'll see the two sort of the, the one two section of the of the thumb and that's the bit we're going to paint we're going to paint these two parts of so we're going to bring out the black here nice and simply just going to apply that, apply that onto the fingers. Right to about there, like so. So you can see there's a bit of the the uh, it's a bit still blue, rest of it black. And I'm going to copy that round on all the fingers there. Being nice and neat, making sure we don't smudge any of this onto the blue hands. that a little bit you go nice and neat now you know all over the fingers so if you need a little ex if you need some more explanation as to why the great company of frost balls paint their fingers and a neat plate of their power armor in black that would do do check out the Saga of the Thunder Howl, the uh, the lore story video that I've that I've written, that I've got on my on my channel. And it's their defining story, really. There we go. So black all the way around, like so. Paint all the fingers. There it is. And 
cool. And normally I would paint on any kind of Space Marine model that's got a defined knee pad, like a round pauldron on the on the knee plate. I would uh, I would paint one of those. Typically, I'd paint one of those in black. Uh, if there isn't something like that, then this little um, this little tail thing that he's got printed on him, I might do something like that perhaps to make up for it. But on Ragnar, he's got this. Um, seems to have this like little bit of plate sticking on top of the knee there so I'm gonna paint that black for Ragnar again just a nice smooth coat one coat will probably be fine with this uh, but do two if you feel like you need it there we go so I'm gonna do that and we'll move on from there so those are the fingers and the little plate on the top of his knee there done in the black and we're gonna highlight those now using using the Eshin Grey. So, same principle as always. Nice and thin, nice and smooth. Good quality consistency going on here. Not overloading the brush and we're just gonna just pick out the sharpest details on these areas. Just to, just to help help them sing a bit more. So, right on the, on the edge of that plate like so. And on the fingers, just on the main, main sort of knuckly shape, just a little bit, just to help to sort of define them. But I wouldn't go low as you're not trying to repaint them. You know, they aren't, they, there's not a lot of area on them, so you only need like a tiny little bit of this color just to, just to give them a little bit of lift. And that's what we're going to do. So, gonna do that and then in fact I'll have it done in just a second a little bit along the along the length of the fingers there on those bits a little touch on the knuckles maybe or the um, the joints the joints a little bit there a bit on the thumb there we go Simple as that, just a little bit of just a little bit of something just to help define those. Just to help define those parts a little bit more. There we go. So the next thing we're gonna do after that, uh, we're gonna bring out we are very much almost done here. What we're gonna do is bring out the lead belcher again. And we're gonna do just a little bit of weathering, a little bit of chipping effect on the on all the different bits of armor. And we're going to use a nice sharp brush for this. This one will do nicely, I think. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to get some of this on the brush. And what I'm thinking is, this is mainly on the sharpest edges. Uh, the bits that might get knocked are going to take a little bit of damage. Maybe bits that are rubbing against another piece of armor. Um, well, let's let's start, for example, down down on this plate, just on the. Just on the thigh there, so I'm going to be applying a little bit of this, and I'm using just the sort of the tip of the brush, not having much on there at all. But I'm just going to be doing a couple of little, little scribs, little sort of dots, and it's not a smooth line. This isn't a highlight. This isn't like a highlight line. I'm doing a few little scribbles, a few little shapes, just to chip off a bit of that paint. A little bit there. Uh, so down here on his leg, I'm gonna do a couple of little sort of one, two, 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 two little dots, tie kind of like that. You can find a little area as well. But let's do let's do like this little round thing here. I'm gonna go sort of around the shape of it, just where all the just around the general shape, just little bits of chipping. But I might also do a couple of little dots in the middle little scrapes like so this is really important not to have too much paint on your brush during, during this but you also want a nice good consistency so it does flow off when you when you when you're touching it you don't want it running you don't want it going crazy you'll lose control and you'll make a hell of a mess so but I'm just sort of blotting and stabbing little bits of this you can do a fair amount on the feet things like that Things that are going to be taking a lot of, a lot of wear and tear, a lot of damage. So maybe on the front here, you know, kind of on his toes, 
a little bit there around this sort of edge of this plate there if you go a bit heavy just just wipe it off quickly before it dries it should look all right might do a couple of little scrapes on his knee a couple of little sharp lines a little bit of a scrape a couple of little dots maybe we scraped it you can do a little bit on the black as well that's going to take a knock as well here and there a little bit on there and that's it just don't go crazy overboard with this uh, otherwise it's going to look might look a little bit weird but a subtle amount I think is quite nice uh, bit too heavy there but I think a subtle amount is quite nice and it just helps to give it a sort of less sort of block solid color feel and perhaps a little less I don't want to say cartoony but less clean cut you know less for factory fresh a little bit more just a little bit more natural perhaps a little bit more war torn I think it works quite well nice bit about something like this we've got these uh, we've got like a few different layers here I can just use the long length of the bristles just to catch along all of those just a couple of little dots like so a little bit there on his feet and a little bit more and these joints here and there we go so anything that's going to get knocked anything that's going to be there's going to take some damage or anything that might be just rubbing against something um, give it just a little bit of weathered effect a little bit of armor chipping and I'm going to work my way around and do this all the way around the model and then and then that should be us done for today and there we are then so that's the power armor complete uh, a nice little bit of this little bit of chipping effect on there as you can see a little bit of battle damage a bit of weather damage gives it a slightly more natural look a little less a little less stark and bold block colors i like it anyway so uh, like i said we've still got the frosting effects to achieve but uh, we're not going to be doing that until everything else is done and dusted so uh, but for now there we go that is my approach to doing the space wolves blue gray power armor for the great company of frost balls uh, and there we have it then so that's the first episode of painting the frost paws complete where in this episode i showed you i unveiled the, unveiled the secrets of how to paint the power armor so um i hope you'll join me for the next episode in the next episode we're going to be taking a look at all the basic weaponry so i'm going to be showing you how to paint how to paint this paint the signature the signature black scabbard combat knives that you see on every single model in the frost paws i'll be showing you my approach to painting uh, basic things like uh, bolt guns and, and chain swords and things like that so i'm going to be painting old frost fang here so that's going to be exciting and then lots to do from there uh, so i hope you'll check out the rest of the series and keep an eye out for for that yeah. and if you have enjoyed the video today then a, a like and a comment would be very very much appreciated and if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the frozen fortress then perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber and once again whoever you are thank you very very much for joining me today i'm winter wizard that's dimu and for now Keep it frosty.